Hi, I'm Ray Salemi, the author of the UVM Primer. Welcome to Chapter 10, which is Creating an Object-Oriented Test Bench. This is the last chapter before we start talking about the UVM in earnest. We've been talking for the past few chapters about object-oriented programming and object-oriented programming techniques. And now we're going to use those to create a test bench. What we're looking at here is the top level of that test bench. We have a module called Top. It instantiates our DUT, remember the tiny ALU. Uh, it also instantiates a system Verilog interface called tiny ALU BFM. And this is new, it has a variable of type testbench that holds a testbench object. Now if we remember back in the module version, we instantiated the tiny ALU, we instantiated the interface, and then we passed that uh, interface as a port in the port list of three modules the tester, the scoreboard, and the coverage. Uh, now instead what we're doing is we're creating a, an object called test bench and we're passing it a handle to the interface. And then we're calling a method in that test bench called execute and that method tests our dot. So now we can look inside of this test bench object, test bench class, and see how does it, how does it actually um, test our dot. If we look at testbench.svh, uh, we can see here that we have a, a constructor that reads in a tiny ALU BFM and stores it in a variable called BFM. And then it has that task called execute, which you saw we just called. Uh, what execute does is it, is it creates a new tester, a new coverage object, and a new scoreboard object. So now we have three objects. You can see at the top here we've declared variables for them. So the tester handle is of type tester, the coverage handle is of type coverage, and the scoreboard handle is of type scoreboard. These are all classes now. And then we do a fork join. So this creates three threads, and we call the execute method uh, in each of our objects. So we say tester.execute, coverage.execute, and scoreboard.execute. These all start running in their own thread and each one of them has access to the signals of the DUT because of the BFM. If we look at the tester, we see again our constructor that reads in a BFM, and then this code looks just like the code from before. We have a get op, we have get data, and we have this execute task. The execute task works just like the execute task did before. Uh, it, uh, it uses the send op um, function inside the BFM to uh, send in some, uh, some a reset. You can see it's sending a reset here. It sends in a multiply, it sends another reset, and then it loops 10 times getting random operations and random data and sending them into the, uh, to the tiny LU. Looks just like our, um, our module code, except this is a class. You can see here we've got this is declared as class tester. If we look at the scoreboard, that's another class, class scoreboard, also has a BFM, uh, and its execute works the same way as the module did on the positive edge of BFM done. It checks for the operation, calculates the predicted results, and compares it to the actual result. It works just like the other one. And as you might expect, coverage works the same way. We have a class coverage, and the coverage class uh, has the A, B, and the op. If we go down to its execute statement, execute method, it looks at the negative uh, edge of the BFM clock, reads A, reads B, reads the operation, samples both of the cover groups, and creates coverage. And so now we've seen that we can create a test bench using classes and using objects. And that's how this all ties together. We create a top level object. That top-level object instantiates the other objects necessary to make the test bench. It launches them all inside of uh, their own threads, and then those classes and object, those objects all work together to verify your device under test. In our next chapter, we're going to see how to do the same thing, but using the UVM.